Okay, I'm alive. Welcome to this morning's revisiting targeting target setting webinar with E Memoir and Fetton. This morning we're joined by Sally Wotton and Beach Catch Marchick. We like to keep the sessions as interactive as possible, so please feel free to use a question or a chat facility. I'm going to hand over to Bees for another intro. Thank you. Thanks very much, Manik, and good morning to everyone, particularly good morning to our subscribers and our regular viewers and listeners. And if you're new to uh, our webinars, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy it and share it with your colleagues. We always encourage sharing with colleagues, particularly those of you that might not be able to attend live this morning, if you obviously pick up the recording. If there are any issues or questions, please get back to us at the contact details, which we always provide with our webinars. I'm joined this morning by Sally Wooten. Would you like to say a few words about yourself, Sally? Uh, yes, good morning, Beige. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Sally Wooten from the FETN. Um, I do research and, and development work for tutorial provision and target setting is something that's that's high on my agenda at the moment. So hopefully you'll enjoy just sharing my thoughts and, and contributing to the further developments of those. So thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Sally. And thanks to those of you who responded to the question that we posed. Uh, in advance of today's webinar, which was, uh, you know, how do you uh, uh, approach and, and plan and prepare students for target setting in whatever context you're working, whether it be uh, with 16 to 19 year olds, adults, loan funded learners, and of course, increasingly, this is very important for our apprenticeship learners. Uh, as Marek says, we welcome uh, questions in the course of today. I will act as the monitor and moderator. So while Sally is is uh, concentrating on the presentation and the, the materials that she wants to share with you, myself and Marek will be looking at any questions and then at the appropriate point uh, posing those questions if they can be answered during the course of the webinar. If not, we'll obviously wait till after the webinar when the recording perhaps is, is stopped if there are questions much more pertinent to your own organisation, or obviously questions that might require some further study from us. So over to you, Sally. Thank you very much. Can we have the first slide, please? There we go. OK, so what I have planned for this session is just to look at the problems that we have around target setting and just to clarify for ourselves the purpose and processes of that. Um, terminology for me is a, is a key issue at the moment and then hopefully we can start to move towards some clearer ideas about how we can improve target setting and embrace that change. Um, I'd just like to say that, that these are my thoughts. I'm not saying at this point this is how it should be done. What I'm trying to do here is to create a, a wider discussion so your feedback is, is very welcome and then hopefully together we can develop a, a better way of, of moving forward. Um, as Marek said, thanks to all of those that have already shared their ideas. There's some wonderful things coming through and please feel free to contribute your, your thoughts during the session. OK, so problems with target setting. These are some of the aspects that I've seen as I've been in various colleges and, and training organisations auditing um, tutorial provision and looking at their target setting. These are some of the issues that, that I find um, as I'm travelling around. I'd be interested to know what, what your particular problems are, whether they're highlighted here or whether there are indeed different problems that are faced by people undertaking target setting. Okay, do you want to move on? So I think also we need to look at sharing the terminology. One of the key issues that I've found is that quite often um, target setting is placed on a timetable, so it's an activity in itself, when actually it should be um, part of, oops, have we, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> it should be part of the one-to-one -one review. So the one-to-one -one review is the learning conversation and it's where the review of progress and planning for future takes place. Target setting is part of that process and I think also within that we need to kind of go back to the aims, objectives and target setting just to clarify what we actually mean by a target. OK, if you can move on, Beach, thank you. So just for those that like to see this as a visual interpretation, we have our overall aims. 
those of you that have been in the business a long time will recognize this. This is nothing new, but I think we need to revisit it. We've got our objectives that sit underneath those aims. And then we have our targets, which are the small steps that help us to eat to achieve each objective and to fulfill that aim. So I'd like us to go back to starting to think about it in that way so that we can break down what we're setting because quite often what we see is we're having aims set, we're having objectives set, um, we're not actually setting targets. So targets are the small steps to achieving our overall aims. And if we go back to the um, the, the problems, some of the problems that we have around target setting. One of the key things for me is that we set aims and objectives which in themselves are too big to achieve and therefore we get a sense of failure or things are partially achieved but that effort's not rewarded. So I think there are benefits around getting targets right. Okay, so these are just a couple of examples now. This is a, an example of academic target setting, just to see that breakdown. I'll just give you a moment to have a little look at that. These are generalized examples. And you'll see from this example that there are quite a few targets to achieve that aim. And one of the issues that we have is that when it comes to recording, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail, the, you know, we, we've got this issue where people say, I can't write, you know, half a dozen targets down for everything that they need to do. So we need to start looking at better ways of doing this and what needs to be recorded, but understanding and acknowledging what it is that we're actually recording and trying to achieve and how we can best help those learners to recognize the targets, the smaller steps, in order to be able to ful fulfill their aims and objectives. To move on to the next one. The next one is just, um, it, this is one around behavior, one that crops up quite a lot in terms of punctuality. I'll let you have a little look. I do tend to rattle on, so please, if there's any questions or comments in, in, in between any of these, please, please feed back and I can pick them up at the time. Are we OK with that? OK, so then if we look at what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is initiate some actions and help the learner to move forward. And by identifying those small steps, um, we can actually help them to, to make those little steps in order to fulfill the aims and objectives, which we've already said, just a little visual interpretation. So if we move on to the process itself. So this is the learning conversation. And there is the review of where I am now, if we've met them before, where I want to be. I'm sure all of these aspects you recognize. And as you can see, that target setting, the steps I need to take, is just a part of this process. And it's really important to recognize that it's through that learning conversation that those targets will emerge. And it's important for the tutor to be able to question effectively in order to help the learner think through what it is that they need to do and how they can move forward using their own strategies and their own toolkit because it's no good as trying to say this is how you should do it because we all work differently so we need to encourage the learner to consider how they can move forward the best way for them within their circumstances their abilities at that time OK, so the learner's role is key in this because we're encouraging them to engage. So it's prompts from the tutor that should enable the learner to engage in each stage of this process. I'll just let you take a little look at that. And again, you can see where targets are sitting in in planning their tasks in a manageable way. 
is what we're trying to do when we're target setting. Okay, so if we look next at the skills development within this process, which is on the next slide. Sorry, Sally, I was just looking at a question. That <laughs> All right, okay. Um, yeah, there's a question about, uh, it's about the learner's role. And yeah. the question is, how do we prepare our learners? Because they all come from very different backgrounds, different start points. How do we actually prepare them to have that role in the process? I think it's it's a stage that, that is often missed out and induction is an ideal um, place to talk about target setting, to talk about what their role is, how they can be supported, methods of preparation because as we said earlier there are different methods in which we can we can prepare the learner but but the, there is this assumption that we have our one-to-one -one reviews with learners and quite often they are presented with targets and there is no discussion around what these targets are how how they can consider and reflect on their progress how they can identify areas in which they would like to improve or feel they need to improve so it's it's all about those taking opportunities through maybe group tutorial through induction um, maybe through um, you know their course handbooks in, and it's having that discussion about how they can prepare and what target setting is and I think that one of the biggest issues that we've got is a lot of tutors are not clear on this. So if tutors don't understand or, or don't have the, the um, information to work on within, within the college, the processes and, and how they can actually engage in that learning conversation, this, this is where the problem stems from. So I think we need to look very carefully at are we preparing them to to uh, undertake target setting do they understand what it's about and and what their role is in it so i think we need to do more background work in in order to give that information out so that when they sit down for their one-to-one -one reviews they're very clear on what that what's going to happen during that process and how they can prepare does that and answer the that, question no that does and there's a backup there's a follow-up question so thanks very much for this the follow-up question is, you mentioned the terminology in a previous slide, which obviously we as, as tutors, uh, workplace assessors, managers of uh, student services, we yes. all have to agree a common understanding. Yes. Um, the question is, is, is this the most appropriate language for the students themselves? Ah, we, we will be coming on to that, but but I I think it needs refreshing. My my own personal thoughts on the research that I've been doing is that we we need to take a different approach. I think one of the problems with target setting is the terminology has been used in so many different ways over a long period of time that it's actually become inane it doesn't mean anything to anybody anymore and it's it's just you know we, we feel the groans coming on when we talk about target setting and i think we need to freshen it up we may, need to make it more learner centered and we, we need to take an approach that doesn't just feel like we're going through the motions so so yes i agree that that terminology does revisit it i do touch on this uh, um, in a couple of slides time i do touch on terminology and i think um, you know this is this is where i would like a lot more dialogue and i would i would like to set up some kind of working group i know some other people on a previous um session have said that they'd like that so perhaps we can we can look at that together that's great thanks thanks sally thanks okay so i think one of the things that we don't recognize enough um is the the skills development that's taking place during this review process and i think if we were to recognize this more um, maybe a little bit more attention will be paid 
to to doing it well so if we have a look at um just again that process i'll just give you a moment just to have a look at the skills development that learners can experience while going through this process so hopefully you can see where there's um target setting supporting personal development academic academic development employability skills all all of the things that come under the new personal um social behavior and welfare um in the inspection um oh sorry in the inspection framework so you know all of this is feeding into um that aspect of inspection so it's also apart from the fact that it's it's encouraging individuals to develop these skills it's a it's a good source of evidence as well where learners are developing these skills and there's another question here uh, sally coming in particularly with relevance to potential barriers to progress one of our listeners is particularly working with adults who are returning to learning and uh, they see this is one of the major issues. Uh, any suggestions? Obviously, you've talked about you know flexibility, perseverance, but uh, from your experience, ways that we can actually help those adults to overcome some of those barriers themselves rather than rely on the tutor. Yeah, again, I think it's it's about exploring what what those issues are and what once they can acknowledge um, what their barriers are by questioning and asking them what they've tried before you know what is it about that particular aspect that that they find difficult is there something similar that they've that they've faced in the past in a different context that they can draw on how did they manage to get over that and it's about helping them to identify the strategies that they will already have there but maybe in a different context and then being able to apply that within the context of their learning would you also suggest possibly support from their peers oh most definitely i think i think particularly with adult learners i think it's um it, it, they they value that peer support and just being able to talk about it and the acknowledgement that they're not alone in those particular issues can also be very encouraging for them and they can find ways together of of, of overcoming some of those barriers thanks sally thanks okay so if we go on to look at maybe some of those aspects so what we're talking about here is personalized target setting and just just acknowledging that we have to consider all of these elements when we're when we're helping learners to set targets and i say helping learners because again these targets shouldn't be coming from us they should be emerging out of that learning conversation about where they need to move to next you know what their what their next goals are going to be and and how to get there so they are their targets and you'll see in there that there are some of these barriers to learning that would form part of that conversation there's a, a comment uh, coming through here uh, thanks again for all these uh, questions and comments um it's a person that works particularly with apprentices in the workplace how does this yeah. fit with the the, the, the achievements of the of the competences either in the framework or standard um, because often that's what the the assessor is focusing on they're focusing on what's required to sign a person off or get them through the gateway you know if it's a standard mm -hmm. um, and so often it's they're driven by those if almost like lists of tasks rather than than uh, learning yes yes and and uh, you know i've i've seen this quite a bit and i think we need a, a a wider discussion on this because we shouldn't be just focusing on getting them through their uh, either their academic or their vocational courses that's only part of it and ofsted themselves recognize that that is only a small part of what our role is and it's that wider skills development and building in that support for that holistic development that we should be doing 
So I think in terms of the assessor's role, we need to be revisiting what that actually means, because in the context of the current uh, common inspection framework, just ensuring that they reach those competencies is not enough. So I think we need to be looking more closely on what a, an assessor's job description actually is in, in that context, because I think it needs to be more, and it is more, but I think don't think it's recognised as being more than just, just those competencies. And Kerry just wants to come in on that. Thanks very much, Kerry. Uh, she's got a, a, a little question before we just move on. Uh, ideas for helping students to be better prepared for one-to-one -one and target setting would be great. We see quite a few students in every tutorial session, and when they say they don't know what to suggest for a target, there is less time to explore the potential areas for target. How can we maximise effective detailed target setting within a time constraint? Again, I think it, it, it it's not the focus on the targets that, that we seem to get tied up into we've got to set some targets what can they be it's about having a conversation about what their what what their progress is identifying quickly what what issues challenges there are and then those targets will naturally emerge out of that conversation so it is a skill for the tutor to be able to pick up on what the learner is saying and to follow up on on sort of the, the, those smaller comments that the learner might might make about I don't know attendance punctuality um, you know oh I can't get here on a Monday morning until ten o'clock and following up the whys for example and then and then looking at that and and being being able to help and put things in place for that but those targets should be coming out of that conversation we shouldn't be going in with the sole focus of setting a target we should be going in with the focus of of um, looking at their progress and looking at their next steps. So the finite time that we have needs to be spent with that, with, with drilling down in that conversation, which is why preparation is so important. Being able to get straight into the conversation and not spending the first five or 15 minutes, um, you know, sort of looking at, at to attendance and and you know other feedback on the computer it's going into that conversation prepared with that information and that includes uh, that includes the students being prepared as well absolutely um, and Lynn would like to just support something you said earlier about apprenticeships the better apprenticeship targets focus on the skills knowledge and behaviors needed to achieve the competency and gather the evidence required. Too many yes. just focus on the next bit of evidence needed. So I think that, that yes. supports your comment there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the questions and thanks for the answer. OK, so if we move on then to reflecting on the terminology. Um, so this is, like I said, these, these are just my thoughts. This is just something that I'm, I'm, I'm currently exploring. And, and would welcome more feedback on. And we've got in in the red, we've got the um, the smart targets as we know them. But for me, there's also the relevance, making it meaningful, making it motivating and evaluative. And I think we need to build more into target setting in terms of what our approaches are and what we're thinking about when we're setting targets. So these are extend these are to extend the scope of target setting. So if we move on to the next slide. Just before sorry, just before we move on, another another question. Can we just thank everyone for loads of questions and comments? I'm trying to keep yeah, up with fabulous, them. Fabulous, thank you. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it's actually a frustration that one of our listeners has already expressed from within about three minutes of it. He said, the, the, the issue with SMART, why is it that we seem to have problems with SMART? Poor old students have even more problems. It means very little yeah. to many of our students, particularly those adults on non-accredited programmes. So yeah. I think this fits very much with what you're saying, Sally, about perhaps getting a new terminology, a new way of expressing these things. Yes, absolutely, because the, the whole point of this process is for it to be purposeful. 
and for us to help the learner to move forward to just have clarity of thought in terms of what what they want to do next okay if i need to if i need to complete these assignments and i'm having problems this is what i need to do next um rather than just focusing on we have to write a target that is smart and it's and it, you know that's taken over what we're really trying to do so you know I, I, I personally would like to see this go completely and just have a, a different way of thinking about it that makes sense to everybody and 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 takes out you know it's like it's like having your hands tied isn't it we've got to fit it into smart and we've got to we've got to you know write so many um down and it's got to reflect what the college purposes are and, and 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 all of these kinds of things you know the the bigger wider college targets but it's this is about helping the learner to move forward and i think that should be our starting point yeah yeah we've got some support <laughs> that. Yeah. we've got several people have supported you thank you oh that's lovely so okay so just to look at this a little bit more i'll just give you a moment to have a look at this we've got the smart which we know about we've and and, and i'm talking about kind of extending if you like the philosophy and the approach behind it is in the extended i'll just let you have a look at those couple of key things here for me is when it when we're talking about relevant to your aims and objectives why these are important to you is an incredible motivating factor and if a learner can't say this is important to me because then they are less likely to put the effort into it so that so that why it's important is it is really important um, to to, to motivating the learners and to getting them to to engage in those actions and and meaningful in the context and the environment in which they work and learn because that's taking in that you know the, the whole holistic approach to target setting or to helping them to move forward and we've got a bit of support for, for that, particularly from our colleagues in adult community learning who say that they prefer that extended approach because actually it's much more relevant to adults who are returning to learning, particularly adults who are on non-accredited learning. Yes. Uh, so, so they can see much more sense in the, in the approach you've put there, the extended approach. I think we've got another question just coming through, uh, Sally. Uh, uh, oh, Lynn would like to say, would, we, would you want to add challenging to that list? Oh, yes, most definitely. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> That's, That's great. great. Thank yeah, you. Just scribble that down. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. OK, so I've, I've talked quite a bit about about questioning. Questioning is the key skill, I believe, for tutors to be able to dig down and to help learners to develop their own thoughts, their own processes their own ways of working um, so these are just some helpful questions to help formulate those targets that's if we still agree on target setting by the end of this uh, this session but I'll just take, let you take a little look at those these might got, also link back on, to no, I'm just saying these might also link back to a, 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 an earlier question about, you know, finite time and, and, and how do you get the learners to, to identify these targets? And it's through this questioning that, that, that you can achieve that. Sorry, go on, Beach. Yeah, two, two, two things that uh, people have commented on. I know one of the people, that, because I've worked with them on a project, they're saying that what they found really useful for all uh, 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 situations is uh, uh, particularly the one-to-one -one tutorial is that, that it really helps the, the questioner, the tutor or the assessor to have some kind of almost like a question grid 
And those different questions can be used at different points to move the discussion on. But also some of those questions can then get be deeper questions, you know, where there's, there's a, maybe a formulation of a more challenging target or perhaps, you know, uh, uh, giving the person feedback on a higher level skill. So that's, I think that's a useful suggestion, the idea of a question grid. It, it is. It's, yes, it sounds very useful. I think, I think it would have to be used with a caveat that if it's about training the tutors and giving them this kind of information, I would hate to think that people were kind of sat with that because then it becomes mechanistic again. And what I'm trying to do is move it towards a human conversation and away from a mechanistic system because it's by engaging with that learner on that level that we can help them to get in touch with what it is they want to do, how they want to do it, what's worked best for them before. Um, if, we, if we start to get into um, a mechanistic approach of, of, I can ask this kind of question or I can steer it in this way, I just don't want to, to lose that um that flexibility of the conversation but i think the question grid is an absolutely excellent idea in uh, as a as a tool to, to train tutors and to make them aware of the kind of questions that they can ask yeah uh, and, the, and the person that, that posed a question agrees with you as well so that's good <laughs> fabulous thank you for that <laughs> okay so if we move on so language yeah this is just, just a little something that i've been picking up on as i've been traveling around and 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 i think we, we all fall into this trap i know i have a million times and it's just making ourselves clear because if we're judging a learner's um progress against the targets that are being set we need to be very clear on what it actually is that they're trying to achieve so you know if we start saying things like you have to do more of or you have to improve if that's not a clear measurement you know and we can't say yes you, we said you had to do that three more times in that week and you did as opposed to more and i did it once and well once isn't enough so we need to be very clear and it's building fairness in by making sure that we're using appropriate language we're being fair in that assessment and in evaluating what that progress has been towards those targets just uh, one 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 supportive uh, comment there which i think goes down with that sort of improve is that one of our listeners says that they found scaling quite useful you know yes. where you ask the student where do you think you are now on a scale of three to you know not to ten i'm a three what would you like to improve in the next week i'd like to get to at least four what would four look like yes. i think that was quite a good way of doing it and i think that fits very much with the language that suits and fits the learner doesn't it absolutely absolutely and at the end of the day that's that's what we're trying to that's what we're trying to achieve and i think by again this this mechanistic approach when you think about the range of learners and the range of learner abilities and the context and the learning backgrounds in which they come from it isn't a one fits all so it has to come down to the kind of conversations that we have with the learner and the language that we use which will be different and should be different for different learners and thanks kerry for the the question and the support as well for those previous slides so thank you okay so so we're coming towards the end now and um one of the things that has struck me is that we have our i don't know 15 minutes per term conversation with with a learner and then what happens after that we've set their targets um in collaboration with the learners they've gone away they know what to do but then then what happens to those targets so I think it's about keeping that conversation alive and ensuring that in between those meetings that we have, we, we're not getting a situation where the learners come up against a barrier, they don't know what to do about it, so, so the whole topic drops off. So it's about keeping that conversation going and ensuring 
that the learners are on track with what they're trying to do that they don't need more more help or support or or indeed that something different has cropped up since that conversation that has affected the targets that they've set so it's 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 just ensuring that there are different ways that that we can keep in touch because you know we don't have this regular contact necessarily with the learner and uh, Gordon has asked a question here, which I think it relates to what you've just said. Um, would Ofsted look at this process as being intrinsic to teaching, learning and assessment, rather than being something external to the learner journey, i.e. it comes in as part of the discussion? So should it be just a, a regular feature of the conversation that the learner has with any of their tutors? It's on a regular basis as part of teaching, learning and assessment. Yeah, it is part of teaching, learning, assessment, and 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 I absolutely agree that that each each teacher should be involved in ensuring that learners' progress. Um, the, there is there is also though I'm 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 not sure that teachers would necessarily track learners progress so it it depends on on the the setup within the organization if if every teacher tutors a group then they've got more opportunity and will be aware of the targets that are being set for those learners if you've got a centralized system where where you, there is a group of personal tutors you know allied maybe to a department then they will be responsible for tracking that learner's progress towards those those targets so it's different it should be a shared responsibility i would imagine that different inspectors will take a different approach to this um potentially but it, it does all come under teaching learning and assessment but also we have to be aware of that that new um element within within the inspection the common inspection framework now for personal social development behavior and welfare so so it would also come under that as well as teaching and learning so it's it's i mean the point being made is is really important we are we are all working together you know to support the learner to to make progress and to improve and we would hope that teachers will feed into this system of keeping that conversation alive but i don't think we can rely on that in you know totally i think we still need to ensure that personal tutors are keeping are keeping in touch with and monitoring that progress through these these various um, approaches and Claire supports that view. Her comment here is that uh, uh, I, I agree with what we just said about that, you know, partnership. Uh, as I set a target, wouldn't necessarily see the learner again for six weeks, by which time this target could have expired or the learner situation could have changed. Do you have any suggestions how we'd overcome this problem? Partly you've answered it through, the con through that regular conversation between all the key partners to that learner's yes. progress. Is there anything additional that you want to add, Sally, to that? I, no, I think just just you know, looking at this at this particular slide, you can see that there are different ways in which we can we can sort of keep in in touch with and monitor that progress towards those targets. You know, it could be a, an email or a or a, a a prompt text just to say how is it going. You know, did you manage this or depending on what the learner is trying to do or it could be that if you've got concerns about about a learner making progress you could just drop into a, a classroom or catch them coming out of a classroom and just say how did it go and you know it's 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 an informal approach um but it but we just need to keep that we need to keep that tracking and just make them aware that it doesn't just it doesn't just drop off the cliff just because we're not going to see you for another six weeks yeah they need and to it, be aware that that you know that you will be continuing to monitor it and and lynn adds a, a valuable uh, uh, uh comment here when inspecting i ask the learners what their targets are how well they're progressing and what they do when they have problems in achieving it 
I'm not usually worried about who set the targets as long as they're mm -hmm. relevant to the learner. That's the point we've yes. been making, haven't we? Yes. Be relevant. Absolutely. And the best way to make sure that it's relevant is by ensuring that it's the, the, the learners that, that are identifying those targets and that are being helped to, to shape those targets into something that's recognisable for the tutor and the student. Okay, so moving forward, those, those are my ideas that, that, that I've shared, but I think I'd, I always like to know what you can take from the discussion, how you would like to develop and share these ideas, um, what's useful for you in order to improve practice, and what can you commit to, to doing next and that could just be keeping this conversation going it could be joining in with a with a, a forum um, as I've said I'm quite happy to to lead a forum to to try and move this agenda forward because I really do think we, we have to revisit it because there's so many inspection reports coming out saying that target setting is a weakness. There's obviously something not working and, and I think that that needs to be addressed. So, so any feedback on any of these, these four questions, um, I'd, I'd be really happy to hear. Thanks very much, Sally. Uh, as we said, uh, by, by posing these four questions, give you a chance maybe to reflect on the questions. Uh, before possibly starting to answer any of them. But I uh, just want to thank uh, people for the, the comments and questions and they've been very useful. And certainly, uh, uh, Sally, we've, we've found that there's a different range of questions from the first run of this session, yes, isn't it? Yes, which is really helpful. Yeah, and one of, one of the things that also came up from the first session was who should be doing this? And it's interesting when Lynn said it doesn't really matter who does it as long as it's done properly and it's relevant and it does helps the learner progress. Because one of the questions that's come up now, what are we suggesting as a model here? Is it, uh, uh, should the personal tutors also be the same people that teach them? Should they be teachers? What about uh, performance coaches? We've got all kinds of questions coming in here about who's the best person to do it. Um, yeah. and, I know, and you've seen different, different models in different organizations haven't you the mod it has it the the best person to do the job is the person that has the skills to undertake that learning conversation and to be able to enable the learner to move forward it's it and for me it doesn't it doesn't matter who it is there, there are different models out there there is somewhere teach there are also personal tutors there are models where there's centralized tutoring these hybrid models it doesn't really matter it needs to fit the organization and the learners that you're working with the issue for me is are they are, are tutors trained do they understand the purpose of what you know what a one-to-one -one review is all about can they can they help the learner to understand that can they help the learner to engage in that do they understand what target setting is about and the role that it plays in making progress so whoever whoever it is that's doing it it's about them being well trained and understanding this rather than the the job title that that they have that's great. Thank you very much. We just got some one or two comments. I think some people would be keen to work with you on developing an alternative to SMART. Great. Yes, that would that would be wonderful. I think the best thing to do is if people email me. I'm not sure if the next slide has got my contact details on. Um, but I, if if you if you email me directly and then we can we can get a forum together and, and work with uh, with Legion and Marik on this to, um, to 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 get some momentum behind behind this that would be great yes uh, Sally's uh, 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 contact details will be on the last slide as well ours as well and keen uh, uh, making a uh, she said very useful informative and timely so thanks for the feedback we have a staff, a staff CPD week planned in the second week of August and target setting is one of the sessions as we have recognized these need to be more effective to ensure good progress for learners. So right. 
So hopefully, Anne, you'll find that uh, this material is useful. Well worth contacting Sally. From Claire Wright, I'm a progress tutor. I also teach a proportion of the learners I see. I will definitely take a lot of the information and put it into practice, primarily changing the type of language I use. And I'm interested in seeing an alternative to SMART. Thank you. That's Claire okay. Wright there for you. So I think, Claire, uh, you'll obviously benefit from Sally's details uh, and, and contact her directly. And I think that would be really useful. And thanks, Anne, again for, for feedback on the, 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 web, the webinar that you've been part of today. Uh, any other comments or questions? Um, I know we've got some people have said it expressed interest in how this would apply, and uh, we've I think we've had it before. Um, Sally, is can we run a webinar specifically for those people working in work-based learning? Yes, I'm sure we can. Yeah, because yes, I think we'll, we, yeah, we'll 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 all we'll organise that. I I think in all fairness, I'd I'd like to maybe do a little bit of work on looking that at that assessor's role and maybe if we if we take the same approach where we just have a discussion around this and see what what needs to be done next around yeah. the assessor's role and target setting but but yes i'd be delighted to to work on that with you beach and thanks carol uh, enjoy the details and we use the slides at the next team meeting and reflect on how we can use the comments made so that's good as well. So using right. some of the comments that have come from other people listening in as well. Um, so whenever possible, we've, we've hopefully answered the questions and taken account of your comments. Um, Sally, anything else you want to add then in response to some of those, you know, generally in terms of some of the questions and uh, comments that have been made? I don't think so specifically. I, I hope that people feel that I've answered the questions uh, well enough. But um, do get in touch if there's anything further that, that you'd like to discuss. I'm, I'm always happy to, to help out where I can. Um, there may be some bits and pieces on the FETN website if you want to take a look at that. There are some free resources on there. But if one, people want specific help, around any any of this or other tutorial aspects then um, then do do get in touch and uh, and i'll see what i can do to help out and and thank you very much for joining in and uh, sally do you just want to tell us about some of the other things that you are offering as part of fetn um yes well we've we've got this support for improvement slide up now so you can see the kinds of things that we do um i do undertake research um and, and development work kind of as an aside just to keep moving things forward in the quality tutorial provision um we offer cpd events some national ones that that we will publish on on eventbrite for example um, there is the accredited uh, level three certificate in personal tutoring. Now, I've been working with Bradford College to create this as a, a distance learning. So for people that might want to do that as a qualification, um, that will be available, I believe, from September um, from Bradford College. And if people want more details about that it's accredited by Ascentis but if you want more details about that then you can get in touch with me um, FETN itself has also designed um, an online training course which is um, very good if you're wanting to train a, a lot of um, tutors in one go it's very inexpensive and that's a, a, a helpful way um, of sort of reaching across a college or across a, a, a work-based learning organization and get everybody talking about tutoring and understanding tutoring in the same way and that's been very popular and then there's also a, a distance learning pack that is non-accredited for people that just want to take it to that that next level and then for FETN members um, they get free resources um, in a, a members resource bank and um, discounted um, uh, CPD events 
and you get opportunities to take part in in research activities and other developments so yeah hopefully we we offer a good range of things that, that will support improvement in tutorial provision learner development and learner support uh, and sally you've also got the national conference uh, in uh, november we have yes thank you for the reminder beach yes the national conference um will be in sheffield and that's on the 17th of november so um i can add people to um the uh, uh list if you like to to receive the information i'm in the process of preparing that at the moment and we'll send it out so um so i can send that out to people if you'd like to attend that would be great well, that's wonderful. Well, thanks very much again, Sally, for this morning's webinar. Thanks very much, Manik, for your support. Can we thank all the listeners that uh, have uh, uh, taken the time to, to, to spend with us today and hopefully learn from today? We certainly have uh, had good feedback. And thanks very much for all the questions and comments. Um, Manik will make sure that you get copies of the presentation and obviously of the video. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to use this with your colleagues, particularly those who haven't been able to come today. Those of you that uh, are looking for the recording only as opposed to going live, hopefully this will stimulate discussion in your organization. And as usual, get back to us or, or to Sally if there are any specific questions or issues you wish to raise. Um, I'm just checking uh, before we turn off the recording, have we got any other uh, uh, comments or questions? I can't see any. Oh, yes, uh, Claire would like details of the National Conference in November. So that's Claire Wright. Certainly, we'll make sure you get those. Thanks very much, then.